Let's talk about Douglas Campbell, a great figure in Canadian theater and a great figure anyway. Yes. Douglas and I have, somehow our lives have been, it's not been planned, but wherever we've gone, we've met up. Why, why are you here? Why are you here? That sort of thing. And um, I knew Douglas, I, I invited him when he married Anne, Anne Casson from the Casson family, and he came to my Kidderminster company when I was running the Kidderminster Coventry and all that thing in the circuit there. We got to know each other then. We've been very good friends, you know, for years and years and years. But uh, then when I, when I was going to ask to do by Guthrie to do uh, Othello at the Vic, he thought I ought to have Douglas as Othello. This was in the days when you could have a black, a non-black <laughs> playing Othello. And believe it or not, this production was sent to South Africa to tour. But of course, there were no blacks in the audience. You know, so this, uh, this was in the 50s, early 50s. I mean, times have changed for the better in many respects. But um, Douglas had a bash at, at playing Othello uh, at the Vic at that time. And um, then what was next after that? I forget. I've even shared a bed with Douglas Campbell. We couldn't get. We were doing the, the Othello in 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 Brighton. And there was no bed for me, and he volunteered to give me some inches on his. Um, so you know, we know each other pretty well. <laughs> but but uh, then he then Canada came up, and when I got here, of course Douglas was here because he was in the company before it, when it first opened, and he was a pillar of that company as a, as a sort of. Uh, um, lead, leading exempl exemplary figure, uh, and a very good one in, in his, his very strong theatrical way. Some people think it a little bit old-fashioned in a way, perhaps, when they did then, but maybe they don't now. Um, but the th uh, important thing about Douglas and Carl Stratford's concerned is that he was largely responsible for its survival in the hearts of the actors, even when it was going through difficult times because of his work with the Canadian players. And that was of enormous importance, just as a message and as a passion that was wherever it went. It carried uh, Douglas's belief in it. And I think a lot of people owe him a lot for what that accomplished. And I, I'm one uh, of those people. I have one small Douglas story that I have to tell you in that <coughs> one of my years here, uh, it was good and not so good, but there were some very tough patches. And how do you, again, talking about your non-confidence and how do you get out of non-confidence was how to get through the rough patch. And at one point, I went up to Douglas backstage at the Festival Theatre one afternoon. I said, Douglas, uh, what do I do to get through this black part? And he said, my boy, he said, every day at this theatre, I find one thing to make me angry. And when I get angry, I can get through the day. <laughs> <laughs> I've owed him that ever since. Well, it was usually more than one thing with him, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Martha Henry, one of the burning memories in my imaginative universe are three memories from the King Lear that you did. One is John Colicos and his blooded passion and how he made the space physical by everything he did. The second was Martha Henry lying blue, dead in... John Colicos's arms at the end. How did you like working with Martha? Loved it. I mean, she was a she was a gift uh, when I first worked with her, and I think her first job here. Uh, she, she's American born, isn't she? She was mm. uh, she was trained in, in Montreal. No. Yeah. Um, I mean, she was obviously a very very uh, attractive female. I mean, a lovely actress to have to just to look at without opening, even opening her mouth. Uh, she told a story to the students I've been working with, the young people I've been working with, about me as a compliment. And I thought it was the most awful story I'd ever heard. Anyway, she said, while I was directing her in, in Troilus and Cressida, she, it was a scene where they're all coming back from their exercises of the day, and they're all being talked about, and Pandavas is getting overexcited about some of them. And, and uh, she was there near the center pillar, and she said she kept on doing things that displeased me which I would reprove her for and, and stop her for. And she, after a while, she said she found herself crying. And then the, finally the rehearsal came to an end. And as I was going out, I squeezed her hand. And she felt marvelous, she said. 
<laughs> I said, you tell that as an example of working with me. And I said, you'd make out I'm a shit. <laughs> and then you say, I squeezed your hand and that made it all right. <laughs> so I don't know what she said to you about me, but. <laughs> Very good things. Yeah, well, she's a lovely actress, I think. I, I mean, she's, see her, she's playing two very, very difficult parts. I've only seen one of them, that's Hecuba. And I don't, yes, yeah, she's, I mean, it's, the others have a much easier time in that play. But, uh, and I haven't seen The Countess. Uh, right, right. But. Uh, and Chris Plummer, you did Cyrano with Chris Plummer? Or was yeah. That, you did, that was Jean Gascon, no, that was you. That was me. That was you. Chris Plummer, the first Chris Plummer was Henry V. Right. And then lots of things. He was here in the company for a long, long time. You know. And that was the Henry V that you had Jean Gascon in and the French and the English? Yeah. I remember that. I was this high. I well, remember that very well. When I, when I was given the job uh, here, I taught uh, Canada. What is Canada? Canada, uh, a nation with, with two extraordinarily rich cultures, but they don't seem to mix. Isn't it? If, if Stratford is going to grow to anything and become a sort of national theater, isn't this the kind of thing that should be encouraged to happen there? At that time, there was a very good relationship between uh, Quebec and the rest of Canada. Promising relationship, but uh, it wasn't consolidated. And so uh, the first step I did is uh, thinking, well, let's try and do something with the French and to bring their best actors down here and they can play in French. So they play in the the Théâtre Nouveau-Monde came down with Jean leading them. And, um, and then I was decided to do uh, Henry V with the French playing, the French, well, the French Canadians playing the French characters. And the first day of rehearsal, when they arrived, we were all, all, all the English people were there in their sort of beach clothes ready to go to Lake Huron, whereas the French came in, dressed in their in extremely elegant Italian suits. They all went up on the stage with Jean, and they stood there like, we own this. And the sort of chemistry needed to do Henry V and the Battle of Agincourt was already there, you know, with that. I mean, some of them were better than others at coping with the text, but it really, it was, it was a good gust, gutsy production, I think, and, and uh, uh, Chris was splendid in it, and, and Jean was splendid in it, and Gracian was splendid in it, and we took it to the Edinburgh Festival. And, uh, it was kind of patronizingly received by the British at that time, when the time when British were being always very patronizing about anything that came from a colony, even though the colony had ceased to be a colony. It was the same attitude of mine, very boring. It was great to say that when it, we, we took, went back to Britain again with something in 1964 for the Quater Centenary, and we took some productions there to the Chichester Festival, and uh, the reception was totally different. It was really... We took... We took the, Love's the, Labour's Lost, um, the, 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 the um, Malade Imaginaire? No. Um, what was the uh, Moliere we took? A bourgeois Gentilhomme. And we took uh, Time out of Athens, one with uh, Ellington's score. And uh, it was a very rapturous reception we had there, nothing patronizing about it at all, really admiring. And that was, you know, the change in color. The, mm -hmm. the stature of Stratford had grown. It really had an international uh, punch by that time. Uh, Paddy Crane, speaking of Henry V, and Paddy Crane. Paddy Crane is, is the kind of person, that, there's no one else, and I can say that Errol Flynn was slightly like Par uh, uh, Paddy Crane, but Paddy Crane was his own man, and he was a very wonderful example of what, what one wants when you are involved with military exercises in any of Shakespeare's plays, or any plays you do. do. He's doing great creator of fights, and a great creator of an attitude of mind of the soldier. I mean, he was always just like a soldier, even when he was lead living in his little place where he could fish on the water in, in, in Stratford, which I think he was in till his, till his death, wasn't he? I'm not sure, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, much loved. And the imagined, say in Troilus and Cressida, even I remember to this day the fight in Troilus and Cressida with a net. Yeah. I remember that, and I must have that been was, That was Paddy's creation. 12, 14 yeah. when I saw it. But talk about imagination and, um, and, and magic and what it created in me. Yeah. And that was a long time ago. Now, did you collaborate in the kind of 
the way the fight would go? Did you suggest yeah. certain? Yeah, we, we did, which is a, a sort of narrative of it, but the, the means of doing it, the way of doing it was entirely padded. And he was also a, a very useful actor for sort of deadpan parts. Mm. Uh, make, the announcer says so and so. And so. Uh, he was much loved by the company and, and respected because he, he really knew his, his job really well and helped them learn theirs. Designers, Desmond Healy, Brian Jackson, Tanya Mozeyevich. When you set out to direct a play, and you align yourself with one designer. What is your? How do you choose whether it's a Desmond Healy show or a Susan Benson show or a? Well, I, when I first came here, I I, di I didn't. I knew Desmond. I knew one or two other designers in Britain, but I didn't feel I, w I was that was interested in them in coming to Canada. I was interested in Desmond coming. I had been helped a lot. Um, advised a lot by Tanya. We become good friends. When working with Tanya, a good way, and with Desmond, a good way is a simple way, like a family way. But will you just uh, read a bit, read a bit of the play, and see how you think about that scene and so on. And just to read like this, just as simple as that to start with. And you'd have to resolve what kind of period you want to do it in, and what sort of thing, and and it would be a free for all. You know, just des uh, not deciding. For example, this year, uh, I was asked to do Love's Labour's Lost yet again. And I thought, well, why don't I do it? It's always it's called the most Elizabethan of all the plays. Why not do it in Elizabethan clothes? So working with an, a lovely designer, uh, Charlotte Dean, we started working on it. And it didn't seem to get anywhere. Where the, the men were all legs, and the women were nothing. It was absolutely all covered up and all stiff and um, and we, we, we decided then that we, let's abandon it. At that moment that we abandoned it, we also decided to go for um, Van Dyck. For many, many reasons, but the things why we hated the Tudor didn't exist with Van Dyck. In fact, the reverse was the case. He helped the women, helped the men. And um, at that moment, Desmond actually, actually was writing a letter saying, I hear what you were thinking of doing I don't want to barge in, but I think think this about the Tudor idea. And he sort of poo-pooed it completely. And he said, I would like to suggest, this is true, that uh, you, you go uh, uh, later, and uh, how about Van Dyke? Here are a few ideas from Van, from Van Dyke. Put, put it in the post, of course, I get it a few days later. But the fact he thought that, mm. at the same moment as we were reaching, mm. made some sort of psychic, transatlantic, Mm. Miracle happened. Anyway, yeah. it, was a, it was the right choice to make. He's another designer who, like you, believes in the magic of the theatre. Very much. But don't literally, don't literally present everything. Make the audience That's watch right. your imagination. Yes. No, he's lovely. When, when I first worked with him, we did a, <clears throat> a very modern dress. I mean, sort of postmodern, a futuristic Hamlet with Alan Bedell at the, at the, uh, the Stratford on Avon, and. Uh, we, we did that, and it, and it was interesting, but uh, and the, the, the choice didn't work. But already, the I think I mentioned before, the influence of this Stratford was on my mind, and I was doing it, reflecting aspects of this Stratford in that Stratford. Um, but the next season, I, went, I was going to do Hamlet again, with Plummer as Hamlet, and Desmond still uh, designing. Well, we did it. Um, well, we didn't do it modern dress or anything like that. And he, so he came here. It was his first coming here. Uh, he used to find it very difficult. You can't believe it now because he's extremely articulate. But he used to find it very difficult to talk. He used to do that over his head. Like, if, if I do that long enough, I'll find the right word. So there was a lot of pauses in his conversation. But he was a joy to work with and very uh, eager to. Not just to please, but to, yes, to please, but, but please himself as well as you. Um, it was quite a wide, ra a wide range. He it, told it, me that he learned to mimic as a young man because he was so shy. And that in order to deal with social situations, he learned to mimic an attitude. 
And he's a very good mimic, where he mimic he mimics Mike me. Myers. No, he mimics other people. He no, could, but he mimics me. Does he? Brilliantly. Yeah. Oh, I'm my God. He's right. It's very true. Can Did you, you do him? Can you do no, him, I can't, him doing he, you? No, no, of course not. Well, I, I guess I just do me and that's it. <laughs> but uh, he's, he's very skillful in that way. Tanya, on the other hand, he, he, Tanya always wants to start from a very limited, always wanted to start from a very limited palette and then challenge it, startle, because it's... You mean a color palette? Yeah, or a color palette.